Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Uh, just as the guides that precede this one, uh, if you look in the pinned comment in the comment section at the very top, it's going to have timestamps to each individual section of this guide. So if you're looking just for the DPS rotations, uh, tank specs, tanks loadouts, uh, the, you know, the, uh, basically the raid previews, uh, you can skip to the different sections that you want in that timestamp. Uh, so look for that in the comment section. With fire, uh, it holds a special place to me in my DCU career because uh, fire was the very first power that I was back during the beta. It was a character called Hellspawn. Uh, that's back when I was a complete noob, had no idea what I was doing, I wasn't even in a league. I think I uninstalled the game like three times because I couldn't beat the leveling missions. And it was right around Inner Sanctum's release that uh, I made a new character called Obsidian Chill and went ice just because uh, fire kind of struggled on the Arc Custodian boss. And uh, it was one of those like if you can't beat him, join him situations and then it kind of progressed from there. Uh, fire itself, even back in the day, uh, fire was the best power DPS-wise until Electric came out in the first DLC. And even then it was still competitive, but Electric was just crazy on, on ads. Uh, it just had no boss damage, so if you basically you brought an Electric for clearing ads and bought a fire for uh, clearing bosses. And it's really stayed the same. Fire has always been very channel-heavy. Fire burst, mass debt, snuff out. Uh, Weapon Master and AMs didn't really change that at all. Uh, the fire tanking side, it was a lot stronger in the past. Like you, This is back before, I think, GU6. I could be wrong, but back in the day with fire, each time you hit a power, buffed your health. So you could keep buffing your health uh, and getting your health pool increased. So basically, back in like the Batcave raids, wearing like two tier gear, uh, you could be having like 300,000 health as a fire tank. So basically, you're unkillable because your health was so high. And then ice tanks were unkillable because they reached the defense cap and then were taking no damage. Uh, and then that changed... But basically, fire has always been like the turtle tank playset, um, or power set, sorry. And during, uh, this is highlighted during SM, where um, most of the, the survival modes, except probably FOSS, but like OA, Trigon, uh, HH, you all took a fire tank to be successful because you guaranteed that that fire tank could basically uh, take all the, the heavy hits. Like, uh, for example, like OA, uh, all those lanterns would tear through an ice shield and they'd have struggle uh, a lot more where fire tank could basically just sit there and take all the damage. Um, some people didn't like that turtle kind of play style. For me, it was more about just being a tank. Like, that's what tank was do. Is tank takes all the damage. I've got self-heals, I've got shields, stuff like that. I've got, you know, knock-ups. Uh, that's basically how I like to play fire. Uh, and then they changed that in Stath revamp and came out with this jumbled mess that I'll show you later in the guide. But um, right now, Firesim basically, uh, it's not a bad spot. There's some certainly things things that need to be changed. But uh, in, in terms of fire, uh, it's completely still viable. It's, it's basically right in the middle. Uh, it's just that uh, it's not as popular for tanking just because uh, people are playing it differently or, or uh, not playing it correctly. But uh, fire is by no means a, a bad power set. And uh, we'll show you that here. So with Fire DPS, it really hasn't changed over the years. Uh, it was basically based around channels, uh, Fire Burst, Mass Debt, Snuff Out, um, and AMs and Weapon Masteries really didn't change that at all. It was, it was still based around uh, channels. And then here we are today, it's still based on channels. Uh, even Phase Dodge really didn't help Fire back in the day. Fire DPS has been one of those ones where you just, you know, you put out a bunch of dots. It was nice in the past, you could have multiple burning ones, so you could have burning stacking dots, so you'd have like Inferno, Ignition, Stoke, a few other ones, so you'd have like four burning dots ticking at once, and then you basically just do like Mass Dead or Fire Burst or basically your, your burst moves. That's essentially how Fire's playstyle has always been. Uh, it's kind of changed up slightly now, uh, at least in the stats revamp. Uh, they, you've got some solid melee options as well as if you've got some you know unorthodox options which I'll show you here but uh, let's touch on the actual spec first uh, like it really doesn't change it's the same DPS spec as every other guy so it's going to be uh, super fired focus it's going to be 20 in the max critical chance critical attack damage uh, you're basically maxing out 235 into might and power or as much as you can and then everything else you're just putting into health uh, just because Fire does have a melee rotation as well. If uh, you ever choose to run the Tetra in the future as fire, you're putting it into health because really nothing else matters. You, you've got, uh, you could do some weapon taps with fire, but mostly it's uh, some of the rotations are channels. So there's no point of specking precision because you're not going to be doing that much weapon tap damage anyway. So you're just putting it much in do health. In terms of iconic powers, 
Uh, you're just taking um, Sonic Cry and Neo Vandenboost. You don't necessarily have to take Neo Vandenboost. It's just an option. But Sonic Cry you're going to want because uh, it's one of the variations of the melee robots that I'll show you. Everything else really doesn't matter. You would need heat vision for single target, but since these are the rotations I'm going to show you initially are going to be for melee, the melee rotation and range doesn't need heat vision. So if you want to just have one rotation for or like one spec for everything, yes, you need heat vision. But uh, for melee and range, you don't need heat vision. It's only for single the single target. Uh, super speed once again. This one you're going to be taking working dervish, which I'm going to show you. You have the option of taking speed drain as well if you want to use that instead of uh, one of the fire supercharges or neo venom to proc basically the Gemini. Uh, that's a personal choice as well. But uh, essentially, what you're doing is you have to get down to whirling dervish in the super speed tree, which I'll show you uh, once we get to the rotations. If you're not super speed, then don't worry about it. Obviously, this is going to completely apply to you. And then you just take the movement tree, and then I take the resistance ones. Uh, just because I've got the skill points to do that. Uh, if you don't have enough, then don't worry about the resistance ones. And for weapons, uh, one-handed, really you're just taking the first weapon. There's there's no kind of com weapon combos at all. You're just take, doing something to lunge. It, technically, you could use any weapon you wanted. I use one hand just because it's the most comfortable and lunge with. You can use shield, whatever you want. In terms of the uh, gear and mods, the weapon is always going to blast adapter. The head mod is going to be basically whatever supercharger you're using. So Fireball Barrage, I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, Volcanic Calamity, which I'll show later. But basically Fireball Barrage, Speed Drain, um, if you don't have any Venom, it's going to be something else. Next, always going to be Escalating Might. The back mod, you're going to have choices just because you're going to have to, it depends what you're doing more often. Uh, if you're going to be DPSing primarily, then put Berserker on. Nothing else really matters with fire. There's no accelerated ones that are going to help. Uh, if you're going to be tanking more often, run accelerated burn termination which i'll touch on when, on the tanking section but you can keep switching back mods in and out uh it's up to you if you want to do that with the op back chest is always going to be extended supercharge um legs is going to be restored a flashpoint once again you don't have to put any restorative it doesn't scale that well at all in terms of trinkets for the melee rotation you're going to have the slayer sunken rune if you can that's a summer event trinket if you can't uh get the atlantean seahorse uh that's only available during the summer trinket. The uh, Atlantean Sea Horse you can get any time, as long as you have access to the Atlantis DLC. Uh, just whatever DPS trinket is current, and then orbital and spot drop. And the same thing, shoulders, hand mods is going to be, uh, I recommend empower channeling, uh, especially for uh, the single target rotation with absorb heat. Max damage, you know, it, it's not going to be a night and day difference missing it, but if you get interrupted on those channels, it's going to hurt you more. So if you want to melee and put on like max damage, you can, but you're going to need the empower channeling later on. So it's just up to you if you want to keep switching in mods, but I would certainly recommend uh, empower channeling for fire. And feet mod, just tumbling master that um, going to be ideal, even though fire burst and like say fire burst, absorb heat, you can move around while you're doing it. Uh, it's mobile, just like munitions. Uh, you still want tumbling master, especially for say some of the elite raids where you've got to cover the biggest distance and there's no really other foot mod that's going to help you. In terms of artifacts for my melee rotation, I'm running uh, obviously always the Bottled City Soda, but I'm running the Solar Amplifier, Soul Cloak, and Eye of the Gemini, which is more of like a standard um, rotation. You can also mix in uh, the Tetrahedron if you want to, instead of like Soul Cloak or instead of Solar Amplifier, you have that option, except for a single target, you need Heat Vision. But for the melee and range loadouts, you could put it in Tetra if you wanted to. Uh, the only other option you do have is the Granorum uh, Vernum. That's the new pet artifact. I don't have it at 160 yet, but I'll show later in the in the clips actually what it does. But uh, essentially, it's just some extra pet damage. It's 4% might, 4% prec, so it is going to be uh, a might increase over the uh, Elisa Cloak or the Gemini, as well as going to have pet damage. Similar, it's about pretty much the same as Robot Psychic, which I'll show later. But um, if you want to run this artifact, you can. But the issue is if you're fire uh, and if you tank at all, you're going to want the Mystic Artifact, which we'll touch on on the tanking section of this guide. So depends how much XP you have, if you have enough to afford both artifacts and go for it. If not, uh, if you want to fire tank at all, this is much more important than the, the uh, Grenorm is. But uh, essentially it's a nice artifact for some extra damage. But uh, in terms of its effect, like the PI on burning, it doesn't help for fire. It's basically just some little bit extra but it might and some uh, single target damage. But uh, those are basically the two other choices you would have if you wanted to sub out one of these ones. Okay, so to touch on uh, the first fire rotation for melee, uh, there's basically going to be two rotations. One's going to be a uh, variant on super speeds because you need uh, whirling dervish for it. Um, as I said before in the spec, whirling dervish will be at the bottom of the super speed tree. 
Uh, I know all of you aren't going to be super speed, so I have a second loadout for that. But uh, in terms of the, the best case scenario loadout for fire, if you're super speed, you should be almost super speed anyway because super speed is the best movement for tanks uh, being in combat, but not necessarily. So um, don't worry if you don't if you aren't super speed, then you have the second melee rotation that I'll show you. But uh, this is going to be the, the primary one that I use, uh, and that's going to be. Uh, Inferno, clip with Stoke Flame, so basically I set up the two dots right away, I flash point for some burst melee, uh, fire burst, and then into a Whirling Dervish. You can also go fire burst, back to flash point, and then Whirling Dervish, depending on the, the fight. So if uh, the ads are almost dead, you can go into Whirling Dervish. If they're a little bit higher, you can go flash point, and then into Whirling Dervish. Just depends on the situation. And then I have Fireball Barrage as my supercharge. Uh, fireball Barrage is going to be the better option than uh, a Volcanic Calamity because uh, Fireball Barrage, if you're melee, since it's a projectile based supercharge, all the projectiles are going to hit uh, right away. Uh, and two of them are going to be more damaged than uh, Volcanic, which isn't the best 100% super out there. Uh, once again, you can always run Speed Drain or another 25 percent or like uh, even Pheromone Bloom does some burst damage. So that one's up to you if you want to use the, the Gemini method uh, or if you've got uh, consistent uh, fireball barrages which are going to be better overall damage but uh, if you want to have consistent gemini's each out each time then you're going to need something like speed drain or, or bloom to be able to use off cooldown so in terms of the rotation uh it's just going to be inferno click with stoke so basically the reason why it's melee range is stoke flames um so let's see stoke flames i think it's about three squares yeah so basically, um, Stoke Flames, even though it's mid-range, Inferno's going to be mid-range, Flashpoint is not. It's a, and Flashpoint and Dervish uh, are going to be dead melee. So Flashpoint uh, doesn't get any damage. Uh, if you're two squares away, no damage. If you're just within two squares, still no damage. Uh, so basically, you have to be within one square. And then you get the flashpoint damage. So obviously this is pretty much dead melee. Uh, you have to be pretty much uh, like five meters away from the bosses to be able to use this. But that's why you're obviously going to be in, in melee range. Uh, the nice thing about this rotation as well, uh, what it's focused on is uh, since Inferno and Stoke Flames are, are 12 second dots, um, Fire Burst works off the PI. But the nice thing is Flashpoint and Whirling Dervish don't work off the PI. So if, if your ads die quickly uh, and you need to go to the next set and Inferno is not off cooldown, um, Yes, you could be running like the Venerum artifact that uh, will, give, will set up burning. If you choose to run that, then it's not as such of an issue. But uh, the nice thing about this rotation in general is that Flashpoint and Dervish don't use a PI. So you could jump into the next set of ads, use Flashpoint. It's going to hit for the same damage uh, if they're burning or not burning. Uh, and then basically then just jump into Flashpoint, then do Inferno, Stoke Flames, do Fire Burst. So you get the burning damage from that and then uh, into Dervish. So... The drawbacks to this rotation, yes, Fire Burst and Whirling Dervish are uh, one's vulnerable to interrupt, one's vulnerable to block. Uh, you, you can certainly, adds do block, adds will lunge you. So is this road going to be the best in every single situation? No. Uh, are you going to get interrupted all the time? No. Are you going to get interrupted sometimes? Definitely. Um, so it's more just being able to quickly recover and go back into it. Uh, there are going to be times where, say, you get knocked out of Whirling Dervish right away. Well, other stuff's going to be on cooldown. So it's like I said before, it's one of those like best case scenario rotations where this is going to be the highest parsing melee rotation with fire uh, and give you the best, uh, like say you use Fireball Barrage, going to Eye of the Gemini, Whirling Dervish is going to be the maximum damage for that because uh, of how nice it actually does. So uh, for example, if I do, uh, let's see if I go on uh, just to show this. So uh, Whirling Dervish on three targets. If I just kind of sit there and let it play out. So just Whirling Dervish alone on three targets was 114,000 damage. Just Whirling Dervish alone. Now if we go to the eight targets, because the nice thing about Whirling Dervish is that uh, it splits very well. Uh, so I'm using Whirling Dervish on eight targets now. And we'll let that play out. And the same thing. Even on eight targets, from three to eight targets where you'd expect a lot of splitting, your one Whirling Dervish is still doing 100,000 damage. Obviously with a little bit less crits, uh, 26 compared to 38. But uh, that's, the, that's the potential. So yes, you can be blocked by Whirling Dervish, but uh, it does so well with fire because the essential behind this rotation is that you have both dots ticking. So you have Inferno and Stoke Flame dot ticking. Basically, you have your big burst from uh, fl uh, Flashpoint and Fire Burst, and then you're ending with uh, Whirling Dervish. 
Uh, so basically you have dots ticking as well as all the dervish uh, dots technically because uh, it's a channel. Uh, so that's basically one of those like best case scenario rotations for fire. Uh, so then basically we'll show you what it actually looks like here, parsing wise. Okay, okay, so you guys get the idea with that rotation there. Uh, obviously the first rotation with fire regardless is going to be a bit lower because the dots haven't had a full chance to tick uh, because you're just setting up Inferno and Stoke Flame. So uh, with the other parsers, you have those dots ticking. Same, same concept as nature where the first parser is going to be a bit low because the dots aren't fully ticking, where the subsequent parsers are going to be more realistic. At uh, the same time, yes, uh, some ads are going to die before those dots finish ticking, but say in the, the new content or elite raids, the ads have high enough health where they're actually going to completely finish ticking. But same thing, it, it's the same concept with any power set with dots, same thing with electric. Uh, but so basically you get the idea there uh, with the Whirling Dervish, basically the second time, uh, weapon tap to cancel. So what I mean by that is, uh, so you have Whirling Dervish and basically just weapon tap out of it. Same thing with like Freezing Breath or Lacerate from uh, Rage. Uh, basically, once those Inferno and Stoke Flames clip is available again, just weapon tap out of Whirling Dervish to uh, start the dot rotation early so you have those dots continually ticking. Uh, that's what I do there. Uh, and as you can see, the first parser is 35, then it jumps to four, almost 47, 44, 40, a 50k, and then one is towards running out of power there for the 35. Uh, and, the, and the crit parsers are still realistic, 25, 24, 33, 31, obviously, for uh, the 50. Uh, that's because Whirling Dervish, uh, most of the time, it, it does crit. So if you have Fireburst critting right in Whirling Dervish, so you've got the, the massive uh, initial burst from Fireburst right into the uh, massive burst from Whirling Dervish, it creates a very nice rotation. Uh, the nice thing about this as well is uh, it, it works just as well in single target as well. So if we jump to the single target, so if we go over to the uh, single target here as well, so say like, you know, Savage Gotham uh, regular or bot or regular raids where there's melee as well. So say if I go into like a melee rotation, so I'm still uh, going into the rotation here. And basically you get the idea there um it's it's not meant to be a single target rotation i'm just saying with the crits uh and whirling dervish and, and uh, flame flashpoint which you can hit very well in single target as well you know you got a 25k parse uh as a melee rotation so what i mean by that is, is certainly by no means do you want to use this specifically as a as single target rotation i'm just saying if there's boss fights that are going to be melee and adds which is a lot of like Shattered Gotham regular, stuff like that. Like you'll see in my rage footage, this is what I use for Shattered Gotham regular. So um, it does just as good damage on bosses as it does on ads as well, on um, both. But you have to be dead melee because obviously Flashpoint's dead melee, Whirling Dervish is going to be dead melee. You can still get knocked down. So by no means is this like, you know, some god rotation. Uh, you can get interrupted on Fireburst. You can get knocked down with Whirling Dervish. You just got to pick yourself up and keep going. But obviously the, the rotation kind of speaks for itself. You know, 47K, 44K, 40K, 50K. Uh, it's certainly up there with Fire Melee. That's for sure. 
Okay, so what I was mentioning about the dervish positioning, um, there is a way, like, if you kill a target that's health is too low, let's try to get one of this down here. Alright, so if I so if I'm locked on this patron with dervish, I'm still gonna hit both, except that this one's gonna my dervish is gonna be cancelled out early. So if I do this here. Yeah, I just died. My dervish was cancelled out a bit early. Same thing if I would have done it here on this patron. Let's uh, get this a bit lower. Because that took a bit longer to kill. Alright, so I've got dervish. Here the demon. Patron's a lot lower. Let's do dervish. See? Dervish cancelled out early. Now the trick to avoid that is... Uh, is uh, let's get this off cooldown again. So this demon's going to be at full health. This one's going to be a lot lower. So if I lock on this demon here, see it didn't cancel out. So I'm not I'm not so much locked on it, it's just more for like positioning wise. So if I if I have multiple targets around me that are low in health, as long as I'm looking or, or my uh, my target is locked on one that's gonna be lower health, it's not my dervish is not gonna cancel out early. As you saw there. So if I'm if I'm focused only on one target that's low health. And my dervish hits it. My dervish can cancel early. You'll see this all the time, and say like you're using dervish in like the um, uh, stabilizer event stuff like that with like a bunch of like low health stuff. But if I'm using dervish on targets that have, uh, if I if I know one has lo uh, much lower health, if I just move my kind of camera angle around to find one that has a bit higher health and just kind of not target over it, but just kind of have the red um, reticule over that one instead. So we'll kind of get this one, this demon low. So I know this demon's low, so I'm going to just look at this one. And even though those, that demon died, even though when that dies it would cancel out dervish if I'm locked on it, it didn't because I was actually had the reticule on a different target. So that's just a, a tip to make sure you don't cancel dervish a bit early. It can still happen, but um, it's just uh, you re reduce the chance of that happening um, if you have your reticule on a target that's going to have higher health. Okay, so for the second uh, melee loadout, this is going to be one where you're not interruptible from Fire Burst or from uh, Whirling Dervish. Uh, if you're doing like low tier content, like older raids, this is going to be really good for that because it's all based on burst damage. Uh, so you have the same thing, Inferno Stoke Flame di uh, clip. So you have both dots at the same time for that. Flashpoint, Wildfire, and Sonic Cry. So basically you're just rotating between the three second combos. Uh, similar setup as towards Nature where they're all three seconds. So basically you're just hitting... Um, the, basically the three three second powers and then cycling back to where your dots are up back up again uh, it's a very power heavy rotation because flashpoint is 300 uh and sonic cries is wildfire is 300 sonic cries 200 so yes it's power heavy but you know like i said um with fire you can certainly play it safe and be ranged uh use that kind of range rotation or just kind of float around with with fire burst but uh if you're looking for like max melee range uh, you've got that world endurance rotation, but if you're not super speed, they can use this. So yes, it's going to be a lot of power, but that's kind of the staple of my rotations. They use a lot of power, but also do high burst damage. Okay, so you guys get the idea with that rotation. Uh, while obviously I can't parse as long as that rotation as the other one, uh, because it's very power requirement heavy, because obviously you get a bit of bit uh, of relief because fire burst is a bit longer, rolling dervish is a bit longer, so you don't have to worry about as much power with that rotation. But it's still pretty similar, like 37. Um, 
since it's a very burst heavy rotation, as long as you get crits on some of the burst, you're fine. So even at like a 20k parse or a 20k crit, I'm still getting 37. And at a 30, I'm getting a uh, crit, I'm getting 37. And then 33, I'm dipping towards a bit lower power. But uh, if you can get the power in the lower content, this is going to be a uh, better rotation for that because it's all based on burst. And then like when you've got uh, the Gemini going with uh, Fireball Barrage, it's a nice burst for that as well. So um, it's still a nice melee rotation. It's still going to be dead melee because same thing. I think Sonic Cry, like, well, as I said, Flashpoint's range is, is pretty much one square. So you have to be like here. Uh, Sonic Cry is pretty much the exact same range. Wildfire is obviously range. Uh, but same thing. So you're still going to be melee for a flashpoint in Sonic Cry. The other nice thing about this as well, it, it works off the same principle as the other rotation where, say, uh, ads die before Inferno and Stoke Flames are back up off cooldown. Flashpoint and Sonic Cry both have no PIs with burning. Uh, Wildfire does. It uh, benefits from burning. But same thing. So if you if um, the Inferno Stoke Flames aren't up, you can lunge in with Flashpoint. You can lunge in with Sonic Cry. Set up your burning dots and, and go into your regular rotation. So um, it's basically just kind of spamming the three second cooldown powers. They're all uh, straight burst uh, with the dots uh, ticking as well. So that's why you, you can still get a semi decent melee rotation. Uh, and that's you know only at the you know, still 44k might so uh, is it not it's not as good as the world universe rotation but you know if you're acro or flight or skimming you can still have full access to this rotation okay so for the range uh, load up for fire um, it's it's technically not max range um, you need fire burst Fiber's range is still like the maximum range, like mid range is still a full like three squares away. So this is the range here. So if I use fire burst from here, it's going to hit. But say I'm like, you know, middle of like four squares away, this won't hit. It's going to be too far here. So there's not too many like max range AOE fights that you're going to need in the game. Uh, but just be mindful that if you're going to use this rotation, you need to keep within uh, what's that like probably 15 meters uh, away uh, from the ad. So but it's all realistic because the same thing you can keep moving around in fire burst so you say uh, if you're farther away you, you can start from this range here so if i'm going to start the build up here move within range hit it then i can move back um so you you do have some movement while you're in fire burst uh, just be mindful that you have to be within like a certain range here to be able to use it uh consistently but uh in terms of the loadout here it's just going to be fire burst, clip with inferno, not really clip, but just uh, into inferno right away. Then it's going to be mass debt, wildfire, uh, and then basically uh, you basically repeat the rotation there. So it's going to be basically like fire burst, inferno, mass debt, wildfire, uh, fire burst, mass debt, wildfire, mass debt, and then restart. Uh, and then you have robot sidekick out as well. You could technically put on another power, flame cascade, um, spontaneous combustion something like overheat uh, it's more just if you get interrupted on fire burst or mass debt it may kind of alter the rotation a bit wildfire is not too bad being three seconds but really you're only using this rotation here so uh, there's no point to have a power that you're not going to use ever unless something uh, bad goes wrong uh, or you get interrupted which you shouldn't really because you're max range anyway um, so that's why I have Robot Psychic on here. Now, Fireball Barrage isn't the most ideal supercharged to use at range because it's projectile based uh, and they spread out, so it may miss some ads. Uh, volcanic, uh, volcanic Calamity is not either, uh, not really the best either for a 10,000 supercharge. If you're not using, like, say you're not using Gemini, um, yeah, go ahead and use Volcanic if you want, but um, I still use Gemini. So you could use like a speed drain or, or some other supercharge neo venom for range. Uh, just something. Be, just be mindful that uh, fireball barrage may miss its projectiles because it's spread out. Fireball barrage is is more consistent when you're melee range.
Okay, so I kind of waited and did uh, two sets of parses there for the range, uh, just because it gets uh, very, um, I wouldn't say inconsistent, but it's one of those parsers where if Fireburst doesn't crit, Mass Debt doesn't crit, then yes, you get lower. That's where like the 28 comes from. That's where like the 27 comes from. So if you get bad crits on, on Mass Debt and Fireburst, then it's obviously going to be lower uh, parsers. But it's still consistent where like 37, 35, 31, 34, 34, 37 uh, at reasonable um uh, crits so even the 37 was a 20 percent crit so it's just one of those parses where if mass debt crits and, and you get some oh, some crits on fire burst you're still gonna have a decent range rotation uh it's more of like a slower rotation obviously with fire burst being a channel with uh mass debt being a channel um and still it's a it's not as power heavy because you got robot psychic on there reducing a little bit but it's still it's an um it's an adequate range rotation for range AOE that's going to keep you out of uh, risk. So you, you can be mobile using Firebirds, you can move around, you can be mobile using Mass Debt. Uh, so basically, and, and since Mass Debt is max range, so even if you have to go in, use Firebirds, get back out, hit Inferno, then Mass Debt from range, you know, same thing, Wildfire, then move in close to use Firebirds, you know, back out using Mass Debt. So Fireburst is the only power that you're going to have to get in close for where you can kind of keep moving in and out of the range of Fireburst using Inferno and Mass Debt because Mass Debt is going to hit uh, for max range. Um, so you can be completely uh, safe from that. You just have to like hit Mass Debt and then basically work your way in to use Fireburst. Use that, back, back out. Same like that. So it's a very safe rotation. Um, the reason why you're not going to get really interrupted on the channels because obviously you can be max range in the back. But uh, if you're looking for like a safe range AOE that still does uh, some decent damage, um, then this is what you're going to be looking for. Okay, so with a uh, fire single target, fire single target is uh, certainly on the higher end. It, it's certainly the best out of any of the tank power sets, and it falls within uh, number five, basically. Uh, gadgets, hard light, celestial, and nature single target are much better for might. Uh, fire falls in basically fifth and sixth where munitions is really good and same with fire so basically it's uh, the top four by far and then like fire munitions are pretty close where munitions i think ekes out fire but it's still the best out of the tank uh, single targets at least now with this one you've got two rotations basically one's going to be for mid-range fire one's going to be for max range fire and i'll show you the differences so the main difference is the um, the mid-range rotation for fire single target has stoke flames uh, some dangerous combustion, stoke flames, amplified heat vision, absorb heat, a psychic, and a supercharge. Could be for fireball barrage, voltaic calamity, neovenom, uh, speed drain, uh, whatever your preference is in terms of a supercharge. Uh, if you want to proc the Gemini a lot, then they take like a 25% uh, percent supercharge. If you want some decent single target damage, fireball barrage does do uh, well on single target. Uh, if you're not running either Gemini at all, you can stick with like volcanic or a Neovenom for the max range, it's, it's certainly, it comes down to your preference. But in terms of what makes this mid-range is, is Stoke Flames. So say if I'm like max range, hit Stoke Flames, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be a clip move where I want to take advantage of the dot from Stoke, Flame, uh, Stoke Flames. So then you got to be pretty much in mid-range, which is about, uh, should be about this range here, which is still very realistic. So Stoke Flames, as you can see, it applied the burning pi so this range is still very viable for every single target fight there's a couple fights where you might not be able to make max range or a boss may teleport away like fate foul stuff like that uh, but it's certainly it's viable to be in this type of range uh, then the second power is uh, spontaneous combustion so basically it's going to be uh, an initial burst and then depending on your attacks uh, it's going to proc two other hits so basically the initial burst if i keep attacking that's the second hit and then third hit so basically, uh, it turns into if those second and third hits crit at all, then it's a nice parse. Um, same thing, they'll proc for AOE damage as well. Same thing with Amplified Heat Vision. So while Heat Vision and Absorb Heat are going to be pure single target, the explosion on Heat Vision as well as the explosion on Spontaneous Combustion as well as the Stoke Flames Dot will be AOE as well. And then kind of Robot Psyche just to finish it out. Uh, but uh, essentially, this is what the, that's what their rotation is com uh, completely there.
Okay, so with fire single target, as you saw there, uh, it is still very consistent. Uh, let's see, you go back up here. So basically, you'll see some dips, or basically uh, dips and valleys, where depending on the if spontaneous combustion crits, depending how kind of the dots are out, because basically the first parse, uh, I don't have the heat vision dots ticking uh, all the time because I haven't procced it yet. Uh, same thing. So basically when uh, stoke flames and the heat vision dots burnings are ticking all together and you get some spontaneous combustion crits, basically every other parser can lead to a uh, higher parse because of those dots ticking or on the crits. So that's basically why you see like 2024, 20, 2026, 2023, 20. 20, 20. Uh, so that's where the dips and valleys in the rotation just how kind of how the dots line up. But still like 24K, uh, 26K, 23K, uh, consistent 20K is never dipping below uh, with basically uh, every 20 seconds you're going to be basically doing um, a higher rotation of how the dots line up. Uh, that's still very good for single target, um, especially for out of the tank, uh, tank classes. Okay, for the second single target rotation, this is going to be more of a max range variant. Uh, so I'm running Inferno, Absorb Heat, Amplified Heat Vision, Overheat, and Robot Psychic. Uh, because I can't use Stoke Flames, it, it has to be mid-range. So if you want more flexibility with survivability, which usually in the beginning of Elite, that's what I wanted. Just because, uh, say, for uh, Shadow Gotham Lead, Pellet should be the Arcane Lead on Dr. Fate. I don't want to have to worry about being in mid-range. Um, with all the fields and everything else going on, I'd like the flexibility of being max range where this rotation uh, satisfies that need. Uh, the other thing as well, with the other rotation as well, uh, because, I yes, the Inferno dot would be AOE, the Heat Vision Explosion would be AOE, Overheat would be a spreading AOE dot, uh, it's not too much burst AOE damage. So say you're on a boss fight with adds, uh, that's where you're going to want Fireburst to come in. Uh, you'll see that in some of my footage in the Shatter Gotham and, and Fellowship of the Arcane Elite footage. Um, this is a good variant because Fireburst is going to be more overall damage than Robot Psychic will. So basically, you're still using the, the first uh, four powers always on single target. Same thing with the other rotation, but if you want to have some AoE damage when the adds come out, uh, sub in Fireburst for Robot Psychic, and then basically rotate there. So basically, Fireburst, Inferno, and then Absorb Heat, and then Fireburst, uh, Heat Vision, Fireburst, uh, Absorb Heat, and basically kind of alternate between that to using Fireburst until the adds are gone. And then uh, go back into your regular rotation. So this will be the variant for the single, the first rotation, and this one, uh, just in case there's any AOE. Sub in uh, robot psychic for fire burst. But if you want pure uh, max range melee, that's what this rotation will be. Okay, so that's the max range version of the fire single target. Uh, basically, yeah, a bit slower to start, obviously, because I don't have the overheat dot. That's why the first part is going to be low there. Uh, the last 19, which is because I stopped. But uh, same thing, can always consistent over 20K, uh, getting up to 25, almost 25K, 22K. Uh, so then this one, since there's no kind of like burst crits with spontaneous combustion, it's more the crits on heat vision or on absorb heat. Uh, it's, it's just more of this is more like a safer single target rotation. Uh, it's going to be less overall. Uh, it's going to be more consistent than the other rotation, but the other rotation, as you saw, 
Uh, there's still plenty of uh, crits every every other parse, basically, with the way the dots lining up. This one's more consistent and safer. The other one's a bit more bursty uh, and higher damage. So it just depends what you're looking for in fire single target. But same thing, all uh, all easily above 20k uh, and getting up to the, the almost 25k range. Okay, so the test here, uh, I kind of had to break up the parses a bit to regen some supercharge, but uh, let's see. So the 187724, that was Speed Drain. The 142011, that was Fairman Bloom. 233412 was Fireball Barrage. And then the 848419 was Volcanic Calamity. Now, this kind of highlights a few things. One, uh, it highlights the disparity with uh, Fireball Barrage. It's one of those cases where all these ads are spread out, your max range, the fireballs aren't hitting the entire group. But say, if a tank was going to pull all those ads together, and then basically they're all right in front of you, if you hit Fireball Barrage, all those fireballs are going to hit. They're going to hit the maximum damage. Like, say, if you're in a big group of ads and like Shadow Gotham Elite, stuff like that, it's going to be better overall. Uh, because of the situation but in a test like this where it's eight sparring targets all spread out the fireball barrage is, is going to hit hardly anything mainly just focused on a few targets uh, let's see even yeah it wasn't even each target there so basically it it's one of those ones where Every situation is not going to call for fireball barrage. In melee situations, yes. Melee, go ahead, use fireball barrage. If you're going to be like a mid-range range, speed drain might be better because as you saw, speed drain itself, 187424 is not too bad. Uh, if you're not using either the Gemini, uh, Volcanic Calamity is going to be the best bet there, being like, you know, almost 900k. Uh, but with it being a 10,000 supercharge, it's not realistic because you'll earn so many more fireballs, so many more speed drains. Uh, using either Gemini with those two lower supercharges than just one Volcanic Calamity that you'd earn every so often. And uh, Volcanic lasts the full duration where Fireball Barrage is, is very burst heavy. Speed Drain's like a slow dot. Fireball Barrage is very burst heavy. So if the ads are almost dead or they're, you're worried about uh, other DPS dropping supercharges, Fireball is good for that because it's all burst damage. It's no dots. Where Volcanic is a dot, Speed Drain's a dot. Bloom, I just threw that in there just so you could see the results. Uh, it's pretty slow as well, unless it crits. Because uh, as you can see, it's a uh, 59k crit and then some dots. But uh, it, it all depends on the situation. So more often than not, speed drain, vacuum bubble, like your movement mode supercharge, you'll be able to use it consistently uh, each time off cooldown because it's only 25% with the head mod. And then uh, either Gemini each time. Uh, if you are more melee focused, then use Fireball Barrage. Uh, if you're more ranged focused, then use like Neovenom, Speed Drain, or uh, Volcanic Calamity, depending on the situation. But uh, that's basically what the supercharges will look like there.
Okay, so now onto the fire tank. Now, fire tanks in the past uh, have been the epitome of a stationary tank or a turtle tank. Uh, what I mean by that is basically you just buffed your health as high as you could go. You just sat in the hole blocked and took all the damage. Uh, in between attacks, you popped your selfie moves or aggro or CC moves, whatever you want to do, and then basically you go back to blocking. Uh, in the in the past, flight tanks used to use like high pressure, low pressure combinations to keep juggling ads. Um, but essentially, even survival mode. Basically, most survival modes, except maybe FOSS, um, always had a fire tank with it because fire tanks excelled in certain situa situations that ICE didn't, uh, especially in OA. Uh, OA was much better for a fire tank uh, as opposed to an ICE tank because the lanterns would just tear through Caraferos, the lanterns, everything would just tear through an ICE shield where a fire tank could absorb all that damage uh, where an ICE tank couldn't. So, But now in Stat 3 event, they basically they took all that away. Uh, so basically, if we kind of go on to what fire's changes were... So we go to fire. So basically, like I said before, where fire was more like the epitome of stationary tank, ice was the epitome of like a mobile tank playing for counters, moving around, popping shields, uh, where fire was basically stationary turtling. Uh, most people found that a boring play style. For me, it took, it took more skill because you had to be aware of counters, react quickly to counters to recover from them, uh, find blue so you wouldn't get countered while you're blocking. Uh, but it, it wasn't about being an interesting play style as a tank. It was more about being a tank, like the epitome of a tank. Uh, so now in Sath Revent, we get 50% health, 50% healing incoming while not blocking. So that's why I was talking about the changes where they're kind of forcing uh, fire tanks now to be uh, mobile tanks with the, the uh, Fortified Assault mod, uh, with Fire Soul, with the incoming healing while not blocking. So basically Fire Soul is similar to Rage's uh, uh, Fever mechanic where you gain 30% defense while not blocking. And then as you directly damage burning enemies, this bonus increases up to 50% while not blocking. So it's all combo meter not blocking. Same type as your combo meter goes up, which I'll show in the loadout section, uh, you gain that extra defense. But uh, you, you basically don't gain that defense until you're up to the combo meter, which is not viable for fire tanks, especially in the elite, where it actually matters. In the past, fires used to be 80% health uh, incoming, and the health was doubled, and then you got 2.2% of your DOM went towards your health as well. Now it's just a flat buff. So uh, fire's health pools are much lower than they were before stat 3 vamp. Uh, and then we've got this kind of... The concept is fine, just Fire Soul doesn't actually work out in practice. So what does that mean for an actual spec? Uh, with Fire Tanks, the, the spec that I found to be the most successful is going into one that relies on uh, more self-heals, where you have, have basically your power number six, which you could sub out for reignition, bloom, dash attack, internal flame, depending on the situation. But uh, besides that, I'm only running one shield. Immolation is not that strong of a shield anyway. But uh, I'm focusing on the three primary powers of Backdraft, Stoke Flames, and Burning Termination. So what that means for my spec, um, I go into, we'll kind of touch on that here. So basically it's a hybrid spec because you want that 5% Resto and, and Vit, and basically in Dom, sorry. Even though you're using your powers a lot as fire, and basically you need a healer, uh, need a controller basically to survive efficiently as fire, because you're basically always hitting Backdraft, you're always hitting your self-heal moves, no matter what. Uh, you still need that extra 5%. You can't give that up for the Dom and uh, Resto, so you need to take Hybrid. Uh, critical Healing Chance and uh, Critical Healing Magnitude, you max these out. These are the only tanks that actually max out their Critical Healing. Uh, Ice, it doesn't matter. Atomic isn't affected by it. Rage isn't affected by it. Earth, it doesn't matter. Uh, where Fire uh, is traditionally the, the Fire Tank. Fire Tanks always need the most skill points to spec properly because you have to take these 60 innates, where a normal tank like a Rage would only take 20, and you have to take 60. So the Rage tanks and every other tank would take 10 and 10 and skip down to Dom. Or Fire, you got to take the full 60 to be um, effective. Now, there's also other play styles where I'll touch on the loadout section where you could play like a, basically a poor man's ice and just run like, you know, Immolation, Hard Light Shield, Dash Attack, whatever, like another, like three shields basically. Amazon Deflection is four and just run like Burning Termination. Uh, I don't run that because that's not a fire tank. There's just a poor man's ice tank. But... Um, to be most successful in fire tanking, you need a decent amount of skill points uh, to be viable. And then uh, you ha you have basically max out the critical healing, max out your health, because uh, the most important spec for a uh, fire tank is still going to be health. Um, our health is basically increased by 50%. Also, the healing is increased. So the higher health pool, the more effective survivability you have because uh, it gives more room for the healers to heal as well as your self heals. So Dom doesn't really necessarily matter for a fire tank unless you're going for like a full shield build, which I don't necessarily recommend. But uh, if you're going for a proper fire tank spec, it's gonna be max health. Take 5% Dom, which I'll touch on why we're gonna do that. 
and then put everything else into Resto. Now we don't, we only put five in DOM because I'm still running uh, dominance and everything else. I'm still running dominance in the augments. I'm still running dominance in the head augments. I'm still running dominance in the generator mods. So having dominance from those three sources as well as your gear, it gives enough DOM that you don't have to worry about specking any DOM in the skill points. Let your gear, let your augments and your generator mods give you the DOM and put all your skill points into Resto. Now you technically could, the, the other way to spec with fire is if you fully commit to Resto. So basically you have, uh, you basically change it so like you have Resto augments in the top and the bottom, Resto augments in the generator mods. Now, I did try Resto Augments, like I did try putting uh, Resto and running 4 in the bottom. Uh, didn't really see a difference at all. Um, it's a lot to level up the Resto Augments and I had to switch my generator mod. So basically, even then, Resto doesn't scale all that well with Fire. You'd have to fully commit and go full Resto for it to matter. But it's not going to be as successful. Um, basically, you still want to mix a both because even then, like Dominance is still a part of the, the healing formula. So if we go to um, stats here. Uh, restoration, yeah, so restoration is combined with dominance to determine the potency of healing and shield abilities. So healing uh, base multiplier is 30% restoration, 25% 25, uh, 25 dominance. So you still want dominance, it's just restoration scales better with the actual like burden termination, stoke flames, and backdraft. That's where resto will scale better. But uh, you still want a good enough dom. So even with my spec where I'm sitting at max healing crits, 153 in a resto, max health, and then even just five in dominance to proc the 1%. I'm still sitting at um, 16,645 dominance and 15,261 restoration. And that's just in purple gear. So once I get like actual vendor gear, elite set or whatever for, for fire, um, those numbers are just gonna increase. So this is certainly the, the most ideal spec that I've seen. Now, if you do want to play the basically the shield meta with ice and yes you are basically the shield meta with fire you would need more dominant skill points but uh my personal spec i've done everything with this all the elite raids solo tanked uh with this the spec here so i can certainly vouch for this being completely viable so in terms of gear as fire always going to run absorption adapter basically it's a shield based on 75 percent of or basically 30 percent of your health is going to present 50, 75 percent of your damage the head mod doesn't really matter as fire, don't worry about it, unless you're running a supercharge. Um, so if you're running internal flame, reignition, dash attack, frame run bloom, uh, then use a head mod for that. Neck mod's always gonna be fortified assault. The back is gonna be always accelerated per, yeah, burning termination because that's gonna be your most important ability. Or because basically you always want that active. Uh, chest mod's always gonna be hardy as fire. Legs doesn't really matter, there's no fire mod for it. In terms of uh, trinkets, you're always going to want chronomatic emitters because that's you really don't have any CC moves as a fire tank. You could run a flame, but a flame is only 12 seconds. You could run a flashpoint, but then you're taking away heal. Uh, so basically, just backdraft them in and then hit chronomatic emitters. Uh, breakout trinket is going to be very important as well. Uh, personal damping fields that's about uh, 36,000 uh, shield as if you had the fellowship of the arcane level, and then whatever else you want supply drop, sidekick, whatever. Foot mod's always going to be Tumbling Mastery just to give you that extra roll range. Uh, hands doesn't really matter. Regenerative Shielding doesn't scale with much. Uh, in terms of artifacts, uh, Fire has pretty much set for artifacts. Uh, you're always going to run Manacles of the Force. It's going to be a bit annoying for Fire Tanks because Manacles uh, is a lot better for like a Rage or Ice. Uh, Manacles is going to proc all the time as Fire because your health dips so quickly. Uh, you're always going to take something that's going to do 30% of your health. It's just that... Um, Sometimes it, it might work out in your favor, sometimes it's not, but it's still an important artifact to run because of the 5% health, 3% DOM, 3% resto. But uh, just be mindful that don't rely on that manacles proc to save you as fire because it's going to be procking all the time. Uh, Distro Refractor is also very good to run with fire just because it gives you that health buff each time you pull with engulf, as well as its 5% health. And the third artifact, which is a very must, uh, you have to have this for fire tanking, is going to be the Mystic, Mystic Symbol of the Seven. This is the new one. Uh, basically, it gives you 50% uh, defense when you have adds around you within a certain range. Uh, increases healing received by 10%, which is huge because we already have 50%. So that means the healing increase for fire is actually 60% with this artifact. And then you regenerate a small amount of health based on restoration each time you're struck by an enemy every quarter second. Uh, so this is by far the most important artifact for a fire tank. You definitely want this. Uh, which I'll show basically in the rotation footage as well. Uh, 
Okay, so we're in uh, Doom Metropolis here, the favorite part for tanking. Now let's kind of touch on the loadout. As I said before, um, I still have a very cookie cutter loadout. This is going to look very similar to a lot of fire tanks. It may differ in the spec, but uh, everything kind of stays the same. You're always going to need engulf because pretty much that's your range pull. Uh, that came in Staff revamp. It's like uh, in Scapel Storm. It also burns enemies, which is important for Fire Soul. Uh, you can take Flashpoint as a CC move or like as a juggle move, but once again, it's not necessarily uh, required because you can pull them with Backdraft, which is going to be the most important move as a fire tank because of its healing, uh, as well as um, the CC on it is very strong as well to gather adds, and then you basically just Backdraft them in, hitting a uh, Chronomac emitter. Stoke Flames, you may not see on some people's loadouts, is, is basically just a burst heal move that uh, has some... Um, uh, healing over time already as well. Um, burden termination is basically this is going to be when it's healed basically on incoming attacks up, up to 10 times. So it's basically this is basically the one move that you want to have out as uh, before you start fighting. Uh, where Stoke Flames is like the reactionary one. So basically if you're already taking some damage, hit Stoke Flames, you get some burst healing from it over time. And then if you are about to start a fight or about to jump into a pile of adds, then you hit burning termination before that, so basically uh, you get healing on the incoming attack. So you already have it uh, running, uh, similar to like a biocap. You, you want to have biocap. Uh, biocap is electricity as a preventative measure, where burning termination is a preventive measure as well. So uh, Stoke Flames is reactionary, and and uh, burning termination is uh, preventivary. Uh, immolation is basically just your shield. Um, it's fairly weak. It's about the same. It's a little bit better than Atomic's uh, Density, which isn't very strong anyway. Um, personal damping field is nice to run as a, as a consumable, like I said, because it's about 36k shield. Now, power number six, basically this is where uh, it's going to sub out depending on the situation. So it's basically your number six power is like your panic move or like your oh shit mutton or like the healers die or, or something that's a bit too crazy. Uh, Amazon Deflection is nice for that. You could... I wouldn't necessarily re recommend Harlot Shield because it can still bug out with a healer shield. So if you're in a moment where you kind of need a shield or need protection, um, if Harlot Shield fails or bugs out, then you're kind of, you know, you know, shit out of luck. Um, I've run Reignition before. It's just a strong burst heal. Internal Flame is really nice for that situation as well. Uh, it's a shame because they nerfed Internal Flame a lot from Stat 3 Vamp. Internal Flame used to be a beast as fire because basically you received double healing on every single took of uh, damage you took. So we're now it's basically um, you heal yourself for an attack, but it can only occur 12 times. So before it was like 15 seconds. Every every So if an ad was hitting you, if the boss was hitting you, you'd get double healing for everything. Uh, so basically you're near unkillable in Internal Flame. And now they've made it much weaker. Uh, so, But it, it's still not bad. 60 second cooldown. Uh, so it's, you got your choice. Amazon Deflection, Reignition, uh, Internal Flame. You could run Pheromone Bloom. It's an okay burst heal. Um, and some small ticks. But to maximize Pheromone Bloom, you're going to have to run Gemini. And I don't recommend that as a fire tank. You certainly could. But um, it's not what I run. Uh, there's not a spot for it. It does give you 3% Dom, 3% Resto. But... Uh, the only reason to have Gemini on is, is to run Bloom. If you're going to run Bloom every single rotation or dash attack or something, preferably Bloom because the way Gemini works is that um, all the healing done. So basically, uh, when Caster's Watch expires, all allies will, which uh, within it will be healed for the amount of health restored by Caster's Watch. So it's nice to Bloom because you get all the healing from Gemini, you get all the healing from Bloom, and you get all that back in one burst tick. Uh, so if you want to run that as a rotation, you can. I don't, but if you're going to run Bloom as a supercharge, you need to run either Gemini to maximize that. Uh, Dash attack is just something if you're supercharged, just an extra shield that has a uh, short 30-second um, cooldown, but it's at low power cost. But uh, primarily I run Amazon Deflection and sub it out depending on the situation. But, you know, 9 times out of 10 for raids, I'll be running Amazon Deflection. It gives Basically, you can't be killed for 6 seconds. Um... And it gives you basically allows some cooldowns to reset on backdraft, on stoke, burn termination, stuff like that. So it gives you some breathing room. So in terms of the actual rotation, uh, we'll kind of stand by the cloud here. Um, important thing is let's get it burning. So the big thing here is I'll kind of show backdraft. So basically backdraft, you see there, it got the double hit. Now if that wasn't burning, uh, let's see if this uh, will expire soon. I don't see it burning. So if I hit backdraft now, I just get one tick. Or if it's burning, you always get the second tick of backdraft. While it's not always a huge one, it's still nice. So basically this rotation revolves around always getting uh, backdraft off. 
that's a nice burst heal. If it, if it does crit, you can get up to like the 30k range. So just by hitting backdraft, you can kind of get your health back. Now we'll kind of go into the, the proper rotation here. So I kind of set them burning with engulf and then kind of go in, you know, backdraft, clip with stoke flames. I have that going. When I need to have it clip with uh, burden termination and kind of have that going. And then I kind of clip in with immolation to kind of give myself some breathing room until stoke flames is back up. You know, then we go back with stoke flames. Same thing, I'm, I'm backdrafting and using uh, chromatic emitters. So now uh, burn termination is up again. This is where you kind of need power. So it, it's not so much spammy uh, to the point where you need to spam, but it's important um, that you kind of keep your healing up. The same thing, we'll burn them again. Wait for my power to cover a little bit. So same thing, I'm a little bit low in health. Okay, I'll still hit backdraft, clip with burn termination. So get the burst heal. And then the, the healing ticks with that. So back thing, same thing. Stoke flames, burn termination. Get the healing from that. If I need some recovery, burn backdraft, uh, clip with immolation. And basically you just see myself rotate there. So it's either going to be engulfed to gather once they're burning. It's going to be backdraft, clip with stoke flames. It's going to be uh, backdraft, clip with uh, immolation, or sorry, burn termination. And then after some chromatic emitter stuns, it's going to be backdraft, clip with immolation. And then kind of we're ready to start again. So if I need to reapply range aggro, it could be um, engulf with stoke flames. And as you can see there, I'm now getting backdraft burning termination. So it's basically rotating like that. So it's going to be rotating between backdraft stoke, backdraft burn termination, backdraft immolation, uh, stun, stuff like that. So And this whole time I am doing this, I'm also getting the massive healing in from the healers as well. And then basically if I need to... Um, if I'm basing in a situation that I'm stuck, then I would just go in and hit Amazon Deflection to buy myself some seconds um, of freedom. So either get some healing from the healers or a situation where my cooldowns will be reset and I can uh, go back into using uh, my healing. So this is the, the loadout and rotation that I found to be most successful in this DLC. Um, it's not going to work unless you have... Uh, basically max healing crits and enough into resto. You at least want 100 in resto. That'll give you the 10%. Uh, so if you can't spec in, um, health is going to be always the most important. So always take health and then put the rest in a resto. Like I said, just let, let the, let the uh, gear, the augments, the generator mods, let that be your dom. And then everything else put into resto and, ma and max the healing grits. And that's uh, essentially how you play a fire with that rotation. Okay, so to touch on the fire soul mechanic with fire, that's what happened in the uh, stat 3 band changes. Let's kind of go back up to it here. So Fire Soul gain 30% defense while not blocking as you directly damage burning enemies. This bonus increases up to a maximum of 50% defense while not blocking. So what that means is basically you need the adds to be burning. Uh, and then basically once you reach a combo meter of 30, your defense will be as high as it's basically going to go. Uh, so basically a beast, uh, base defense now is 45,078. So if we do the burning enemies and get up to a 30... It's very, also very important that you keep them burning, because uh, if you're not burning, if that basically the burning drops and your uh, combo meter keeps going up, it's it's still going to uh, fail and drop. So we're at 30, so basically 51,518, that's going to be the highest your defense can go. Uh, that's going to be basically the, the maximum defense you can have as fire, but you got to keep a combo meter of 30, which is basically uh, pretty unrealistic. So even if we go back and, and do this here just to show, because the rage one goes up beyond 30. Uh, so we'll just kind of do this to 50 just to show it. That that's going to be the max cap. So 51, 518. So that's as high as your defense will go. As you can see, it drops very quickly if your common meter doesn't kind of keep up. And it disappears once they're, the burning enemies are gone as well and have to reset it. So the issue with this is that it's not you know realistic for a fire tank to have that combo meter of 30 plus in elite content. I think when I did Chatter Gotham Elite, I was like maybe 15 or 16 the highest I got. Uh, you kind of you can't keep doing weapon combos on ads because these bosses in particular you can't give them blues. You can't risk giving like you know, Faust or Tala blue or um, even Mark Mordor. Like it, it's basically detrimental if you give them a blue, especially like Clarion stuff like that. So um, 
you're just taking unnecessary damage as a fire tank then or hurting the group where you can't lunge Tala, for example. So it's not like you can just kind of keep doing weapon combos and keep the meter up that way. Uh, you can kind of keep hitting powers, but even then it's going to be slow. Or if you've got a block for whatever reason or, or basically roll the way to have the combat meter reset. So it's really unrealistic to have Fire Soul at 30 in Elite content. And in regular content where you could, it doesn't matter anyway because you don't even need Fire Soul. So it's just the whole mechanic itself just kind of works backwards. Uh, it really hurts Fire because their base, their defense is already the lowest out of any tank power set. And the Fire Soul is just unrealistic to uh, increase to have that extra, uh, what is it, 6,000 defense. And so it's, just, it's unrealistic to have us reach that 30 combo meter um, in Elite content, especially where it actually is going to matter. Uh, so that's the main issue with stat 3 event fires is just the fire soul is not practical so we have the squishiest defense out of any tank power set
from the distance Hey you, can we talk? Hey you, I think you're my subsistence
Baby, lately you've been in my aim. I've 
Reaching out for you and still that's so far away Looking through the smoke in the mirror Crazy how I see you so clear Crazy how I see you so clear And how you make me smile And how you make me smile, oh yeah And how you make me smile, oh baby How you make me smile Smile more when I see you When I miss you, no, I don't wanna be left alone.
things for you Thank you.